a brand new iPhone Pro Max 12 with these four easy steps. Step 1. Subscribe to IMG YouTube channel. Step 2. Click the notification bell. Step 3. Share one episode of Your Money Matters on Facebook and tag three friends using the hashtags Hashtag IMG Your Money Matters Hashtag I Am Great iPhone 12 Pro Max Giveaway Hashtag IMG Official Channel Step 4. Visit img-corp.net slash iPhone 12 P Max and fill out the giveaway registration form. The lucky winners will be raffled during the live premiere of the last episode of Your Money Matters Season 3. Watch and share this with your family and friends now to get a chance to win. Good luck! Hi everybody! Welcome to Your Money Matters! I'm your host, Visa Singson Kaofeng, greeting you from Manila, Philippines! You know, I'm back to school taking my master's degree. I'm telling you, it's exciting, it's rewarding, but it's hard! I mean, my middle-aged brain ko isn't as nimble as it used to be, so it takes me, you know, much longer to figure things out and finish my assignments. Sometimes I ask myself, "Bakit ko ba ginagawa to?" And I think of giving up. But you know, the way nagsasabita ko ng aking assignment, ay grabing saya. Tapos pagdating ng grade ko, lalo na kung perfect, ay lalo ng masaya. It's the same thing in our financial life. It may take effort, it may be hard. Minsan parang gusto mo nang mag-give up. But friends, ang saya when you reach financial freedom. Yung nakakatulog ka ng mahimbing sa gabi because you know you have a strong financial foundation that can withstand crisis and unforeseen events. That's why we have this show, to help you along your journey towards financial freedom. So do subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell so that you'll get alerted whenever a new episode is aired. In this episode, our guest is a well-known personality in financial circles. Randall Chongson has 30 years of experience in the financial industry, having worked in banking, investment, insurance, and of course, financial planning. At bukasiyan niya ang turuan ang Pinoy, lalo na ang mga OFWs tungkol sa pagpaplano para sa kanilang buhay pang pinansyal. Siguradong marami tayong matututunan kay Randall Chongson. So be sure to finish our episode till the end. Ano, ready na ba kayo to expand our world? Let's go! Palagay mo! Bakit hindi sapat ang pagtago ng lahat ng iyong ipon sa isang savings account sa banko? A. Kung malaking ipon mo at magsara ang banko, hindi insured ang lahat ng pera mo. B. Mas secure ang ipon mo kung ikaw ang nagtatago nito. C. Madalas, mas maliit ang interest rate ng savings account kesa sa inflation rate? And the answer is C. Madalas, mas maliit ang interest ng savings account kesa sa inflation rate. That means that your money doesn't grow. Worse, its value even dwindles over time. Okay, we're back to our show and as I've mentioned, we have a mentor for life and personal finance matters with us today. Please help me welcome Randall Chongson. Hi, Randall. Hi, Risa. Nice, for, nice that you, uh, you're inviting me to do this show. 
Oh, we're so thrilled that you're here. We're so grateful that you gave us time. Randall, can you give us an idea? I know people know you. I mean, people in the finance world know you. But maybe just for our audience today, can you give us an idea of your journey? How did okay. you get here? You know, where you are? Were you always financially savvy? Did you come from that kind of background? Well, yes, I uh, came from that background. Uh, I took up economics in college. First job was a bank. Uh, did a little bit of you know business in between, and then I moved into insurance companies, mutual funds, and and so forth, so on. No? Uh, maybe 2008, 2009, I decided to go independent. But I've been engaged in the financial service industry for over 30 years now. So I pretty much grew up. Now, was I always financially savvy? No, that's that's the problem. Not because even if you came from the financial service industry it doesn't automatically mean that you'll become financially savvy. That's that's uh, another story for another time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. True. Because, you know, I, I know that there are, you know, um, accountants and, yeah. and even, you know, people who handle other people's money and invest them. And yet, in their own finances, their personal finance, they are, it's, you know, it's a mess. So, that's right. So it, Lisa, there's yeah. a lot of stockbrokers who are broke. There's a lot of bankers who are bankrupt. That's like a that's like an old 80s, 90s joke. Oh, oh ma, ano ba yan? So, ano yung uh, what, what started you um, on your journey? Ano yung ano yung uh, siguro yung ano ba yan, yung light bulb moment or kung bakit yeah. kung bakit sa faith natin yung conversion point mo yeah. <laughs> kung paano ka na napihit doon. Kasi Risa, no, I I I have always been cognizant of, you know, I need to fix my finances and you know from time to time naman, I will get that awakening do something but I couldn't I couldn't sustain it so my problem is in my younger years in my 20s in my 30s you know you know I think the Lord has blessed me with the ability to create income easily so I never had a problem with income creation so that became a problem I've always felt that you know I might as well spend everything because I can earn it anyway uh you know that's that's a, that, that that level of bravado that I had uh in my younger years i guess uh as i got older um i think my my light bulb moment also happened with my faith awakening it's it coincides no um i i gave my life to the lord uh you know promised to, to follow him and in the process i felt that the lord was trying to fix certain issues in my life now the first one of the first things that i felt the lord wanted me to put in order was my finances uh, I did back then. I was working for you know for the corporate world. I, I was engaged. You know, I was doing enough income, the man. But uh, I felt the Lord wanted me to fix certain things. Like He wanted me to one get out of debt. Second, to to I know to be able to know how to manage money well. Uh, I did not know that you know moving forward is going to be using me to to speak, to teach, and do a lot of these things. But I guess now in hindsight, I realize. He wanted me to fix my life, my financial life, among other things, so that I can uh, continue to, you know, do the work that I need to do for him. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah you know, ang, ang sarap ng pakinggan yung sinabi mo na it was it's so it was so easy for you to earn money. Kasi yeah. uh, yung, yung ano yung, what was the term that you use? Income creation. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. You know, I, mean, I came from a, yeah. I came from an entrepreneurial family. I mean. We were raised, you know, you know the typical Filipino family na they don't talk about money and, and stuff like that. In my family, it's different. Sometimes, ang joke nga namin, parang, I think that's the only thing we talk about money, you know, how to create money, how to, parang everybody wants to, you know, earn well. I, I, I grew up in that environment. In fact, when I joined the corporate world, uh, even if I was, you know, entering the senior officership and, you know, I was department head and stuff like that, I felt parang inadequate because oh, everybody, every every my cousins, my brothers and sisters, they're all into business. I was the, I was one of the very, very few who were in the corporate you know, uh, environment. In fact, I kind of felt I was like the black sheep on the family because, you know, you know, even kahit na, kahit na boss ka na and everything because they had their own businesses. So, so I became a hybrid. I, you know, I would, I would learn all of these things. So I, I was focusing so much on how to earn more, how to earn more. But the flip side is, it's it's not just about how to earn more; it's also how to manage that earning that you have. So, parang I was born, I was born and, and raised in an environment. Even my friends, parang 
ganun ganun yung world ko eh ganun yung environment ko that's why i was influenced heavily on how to make more money <laughs> Oh, buti ikaw, no? That, that you grew up in that kind of um, environment. So, parang ang ang uh, second, uh, you know, the, the next step that you had to learn was was about um, investing. Kasi mm-hmm. nga, you know, tayong mga Pinoy kasi, we just, uh, well, I don't know, uh, medyo mababa yung um, literacy, financial mm-hmm. literacy rate natin, di ba? Although, you know, in the past years, it's really been rising. Um, so, You've been in the the finance um, industry for decades. Has the Philip? How has the Filipino evolved through the years? You know, when it comes to uh, their personal finances. Of course, there's small wins. I mean, I wouldn't say it's not better today. Um, there's growth in that side. I mean, the financial education of Filipinos, the financial quotient, if you want to ask it, has improved. It's now an issue of scale. Uh, it's now an issue of how many of the Filipinos have improved and. Of course, we haven't seen that yet. We haven't seen, because uh, dapat yan magkatrasete to increase savings. You know, Filipinos investing more. And if you if you compare it to 10, 15 years ago, yes, but it's now an issue of scale. So, so assuming, let's get numbers. If if um, 15% of people were saving of the population, and now it's 18, now it's growth. But 18 is you know, malayo pa rin yan to our targeted number. So. Like even in the stock market, you know, it's not one percent anymore for the longest time. It was one percent, pero I mean that's far from our target of fifty, sixty percent. So we, it's a scale issue now. So ganun ka konte lang, as in fifteen, eighteen percent lang. Wala pang wala pang twenty uh, percent na mga Pilipino nag nagsisave. Where where I guess we're about to cross that number, uh, but they're about that number, mga fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Nego hover lang tayo yan, no? Plus minus plus minus. So that's a that's an issue today. And 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 Shepre, if you consider also the pandemic, that number may have even gone down. So you know, that's the an issue. Because yeah. eh? it's uh, it's what you call a, ha, ex- experiencing an inclusive growth. Because when you look at the sec- sectors, some sectors are doing better. OFW sector, BPO sector. I mean, prior to the pandemic, but that doesn't translate that it's in inclusive growth. So yun a problem natin. Mm. Uh, ang ang laki laki pa pala ng room for growth no when it comes to uh, financial literacy for Filipinos mm-hmm. and learning and growing our finances I mean I didn't realize na ganun pala kalit and you were saying about the stock market one um, percent so yeah. you know that that growth that you you mentioned uh, where where is that now? Like double. Well, uh, I haven't seen the number right? because ang, ang hirap the numbers now because of the pandemic. I mean, I guess some people stop investing and mga ganyan, but it has grown. It's not one percent anymore. But here's the point, Risa. Assuming that you have hit five percent, that's a fivefold growth. That's an incredible growth, but that's nothing compared to your population. So, ah, uh, hmm, I, I need to check the numbers, but. It's it's so significantly low that it doesn't matter whatever growth we see. I mean, of course, we celebrate wins. We celebrate those things. We know that you know if if we focus towards financial education, these things will go up, and that's happening. And the problem na sa atin now is the scale, eh? Because again, you know, the biggest problem here is the financial behavior of Filipino. Because money in reality is not a it's not about head knowledge, not about skill. It's more about the behaviors, and that's something na we. That's uh, needed. Needs improvement, yan sa mga Pinoy. Yeah, you know what? Um, I I was uh, uh, you know I read your book, that ebook that you give away, uh, libre yan sa website mo, no? mm-hmm. titled uh, Financial Planning uh, the Pinoy Way. And that's what I wanted to ask about um, because what's so unique about the Filipino that we have to plan our finances in a certain way? Well, number one, I think the biggest cultural. Concern that we have, and it can be a good thing, is that we love our family so much, so much that ang nagiging problema natin, we we have a tendency not to prepare for the future because we know family is going to be there to support us, to help us. So if I am somebody na nakatrabaho, binuboy ko yung mga anak ko, I don't focus so much on preparing for the future uh, because I know my children can take care of me, and and the culture is like that, and it's a good thing. Pero medyo ano rin, medyo nalalagay din sa maling lugar. So, those were the problems. Uh, family dependencies and so forth and so on. That's a big strain. That's why 
nauso yung mga word na sandwich generation and, and, and stuff like this because, you know, it becomes a difficulty. Like, in, in my talks abroad, no, I would go to Dubai, Qatar, Doha, Abu Dhabi, you know, all these places, and I would ask the crowd, who among you are supporting your parents financially? It is about 95 to 98% of them would raise their hands. And joke ko nga yung 2% na hindi nag-raise na hands, malamang hindi nakikinig. No? But, and that's the story. That's the problem that we're um, experiencing right now. No, even if you bring it down to, say, Metro Manila, it may not be 98, 99%, but it, it's going to be in the high 90s pa din. So this is, this is something that needs to, well, at least well, we're trying to educate people so that the narrative will change. Oo, nakakalungkot no, na ang retirement plan ng Pilipino eh yung kanilang mga anak. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then the, the thing is, you would have expected that no, sa, sa, sa lower social strata, no? so, sa masa, ganyan. Pero even in the middle class, even the upper middle class, you can hear that as well. Eh. So parang it's a cultural thing. It's not just an so, economic Yeah. So that th- those are one of the things that uh, you know. You know, I still can't get over uh, what you said. Na nasa you know nasa single digit um, palang tayo when it comes to investing in the stock market. So ibig sabihin there's so much room to grow, mm-hmm. and people like you and me, uh, you yeah. know, and um, you know all those uh, who are trying to raise the financial literacy ng mga Pinoy, like uh, people in the IMG business also, napaka, napakadaming, yeah. ano, ang dami nating trabaho. <laughs> so, and, and, it's, a, it's, a, it's a daunting task, no? Uh, of course, I grew up in the insurance industry, banking, and then 2009, 2008, I, you know, started on my own. And sometimes, parang, when I talk to my friends, like sila Rex, minsan parang, may nagagawa ba talaga tayo? Parang, parang minsan naisip namin, and then, meron naman. Kaya lang, it's every, di ba? I think, I think, gusto ko, gusto ko, in our lifetime, we see, times to give you that growth. So, mm-hmm. so, it's getting there, it's getting there. Uh, maybe, it's just an issue of building skill, you know, to use other techn- technology insights, uh, shows, and stuff like that. But, the, one of the things, that, 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 na nakita ko na encouraging no you say 15 years ago there are no shows like this there are no you know there's no awareness for these things now now there is so we just have to do it i mean you know I, I'm, I'm surprised people actually watch my youtube or check my blogs or my but we want to see more of that uh, increase and and that's happening din naman hopefully we have to yeah. do- yeah, you know, the, uh, I read that the millennials, ang mga kabataan, eh, mas magagaling daw mag-invest uh, at mag-handle ng pera compared dun sa generation natin, which is the, ano ba tayo, Gen X ba tayo? Gen X. <laughs> diba? Gen X. And, uh, and the baby boomers, mas magaling yeah. daw ang mga millennials mag-handle ng well, pera. So, hopefully, that, that's that, the growth. No? That's that's something that we wanna be. Well, magaling sila mag, uh, mag-broadcast, no? But, um, of course, me, in my background, I do a lot of research. No? I have to see the numbers also to support it. Eh. What I've seen is that the, the level of savings has not yet increased. So, I'm going to put it this way. No? I, I, I don't want to bore you with data. Uh, we have more younger people, millennials, so whatever you want to call them, in the workforce today. By, by mere volume, okay? by mere volume, by mere scale, and if they are financially awakened, we need to see the number of savings and, and uh, to go up. We haven't seen that, eh? Mm-hmm. So, alam mo yon. Iba yung nakikita mo sa social media. Iba yung iba yung ano? Iba yung <laughs> iba yung the, 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 the stats. Yeah, the yeah. So, uh, at the end of the day, I mean, one of the things that I've been at least me been trying to tell my my colleagues is. Let's look at data also. Let's see how this. I mean, of course, we've seen um, significant growth. Uh, I had a uh, the meeting with the BSP. You, the, the investment level of the OFW has increased, but then again, it's an issue of scale, pa din. Because scale, scale, pa rin to, eh, ba? Parang may kaibigan ka. Oh, nagipun na ako. Kaya ko na magipun ng 500 pesos a month. Okay, that's a big improvement, but that does not mean you're gonna have financial freedom with 500 pesos a month. So, alam mo yon. So we want to be able to build the scale, and and education is the key, and and you know shows like this are very helpful. You no, know, even 
of course the the the, the limitation of the uh, of of of, ano, of of education hindi rin siya ganun ka effective to, to a certain point in time kasi kailangan pa ulit-ulit no and kailangan yan it's something that has to be echoed in the home in the environment in the workplace it has to be culture driven so yun lang um sorry boring you with all these stats no no, no uh, east asian uh, asian east asian retirement study shows that only 8% of Filipinos prepare for retirement. So again, those numbers, we have to see those numbers to increase. I mean, honestly, with 8%, let's assume na, you know, data, ano, let's just assume na, I'll give it a bonus of 2%. Let's just assume 10% of Filipinos prepare for retirement. What do you do with the 90%? Diba? I mean, these are, these are the numbers that needs to to see. Increase in savings, increase in investments, increase in retirement programming, uh, a number of people being insured. Those are the numbers that we are always, are still lagging. And, yun lang eh, minsan, you know, sa atin sa advocacy, parang, kailan daw magbabago to? I mean, meron naman pagbabago and, and it's nice that we're hearing that because syempre, I'm, you know, I have, I run communities also and I've seen them. Pero it's an issue of scale. Example, uh, I have this community in the UAE with about 5,000 people. O, diba? I mean, and let's just assume, for for argument's sake, that fifty percent of them are have learned a lot and they're they're they've increased their financial education and they're doing something. So fifty percent. So that's about two thousand five hundred. Two thousand five hundred versus about eight hundred thousand there. It's now an issue of scale again. So, you know, how do we now build the scale? That's that's the challenge for us. Yeah. Oh, Adami, and there, there's so much work ahead um, for all of us. Magbe-break lang po tayo for commercial at pagbalik po natin, marami pa mahaba pang usapan natin with Randall Chongson sa pagbabalik po ng Your Money Matters. Usaping pinansyal, magkaroon ng sapat na kaalaman. Matutong mag-ipon ang pinagpaguran. Hindi masasayang. Hindi mababaliwala. Mahalagahan ang kinikita. Para sa sarili. Para sa pamilya. Para sa mga mahal natin sa buhay. Ako. Kami. Tayo. Bahagi ako. Join ako. Kaya nating abutin ang 30 million Filipinos financially educated by the year 2030. Hashtag 30M2030. Corina Sanchez Rojas, kasama ninyo sa isang makabuluhang misyon. Someday, you will get older. Slower, grayer, but also wiser, calmer, and freer than ever. At Kaiser, we help you prepare for those years ahead. So you can keep doing what you love with the people that matter the most. for your future today. Kaiser International Health Group, the first name in healthcare. Nagbabalik po tayo sa ating programang Your Money Matters and of course, we are with Randall Chongson. Randall, itong tanong ko naman ngayon, um, what tools or strategies have you found to be helpful para dun sa mga nag-uumpisa pa lang in their financial life. Kasi um, ag- gaya nga ng sinabi mo, you know, we need to scale up. Kailangan kung, kung uh, nasa 500 pesos pa lang tayo a month nag, uh, nag- nag-uumpisa mag-save. Kailangan nating lakihan. Pero paano yung mga nasa zero pa? Okay. <laughs> diba? Ano yung mga tools and strategies na, na pwede nating maibigay sa kanila para ma- ma- makatapak man lang sila dun sa 500 pesos a month na, na pag ano pag sa save well number one i think alam mo boring man pero importante no seminars are still effective uh syempre now we're doing more siguro more virtual seminars no the seminars are still effective uh 
although it's syempre yung limitation niya on how to be able to do that a secondary one is this kind of a seminar pero more community based type is also working you know breaking down into small groups and 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 yan are effective no again conferences are always going to be great but it has to be kailangan merong 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 sumusundot meron na papaalala may tumutulong so uh, breaking it down into smaller groups having a an online community wherein you you know mataas ang interaction kasi one one of the things that i found helpful no in the in, in the in this financial journey that we're trying to teach people is there has to be some level of accountability i mean uh ako, i you know if if i have to share my stories I became because I got accountable to people around me, my pastors, my friend, my you know, my leaders. Uh, that was very important for me. And and people who I've mentored over the years, that level of accountability also when I talk to them about you know, okay ka ba sa finances mo or kunyari taga finance sila and I remind them that you know, tayo we need to practice what we preach. There has to be some that some some of that kind of element kasi tayo mga Pinoy very relational tayo. Eh. So If you can build that kind of a a way to educate people, I feel that's going to be effective. Now, add on more nito yung you know proper use of social media, the use of, especially a lot of people use videos. I don't know if you've been uh, seeing the growth in TikTok, no? Yung finance 101 hashtag finance 101. I I participated a little bit on that, but yeah, it's it's speaking to a new generation, a younger generation. So we're seeing a lot of these things happen. Ang, ang ganda ng sinabi mo, Randall, no, that, that, that we need, um, even in our uh, financial literacy uh, journey, we need to have like communities, uh, small groups. Kasi, uh, yeah, I love, I love that concept of accountability. Kasi pag, may, may positive peer pressure eh, somehow. <laughs> diba? Yeah, yeah. Pag you're with people who are, you know, we're all, oh, ta- basta magsisave tayo, ha? o basta mag-invest tayo, ha? So, yeah, yeah para iba yun eh iba yung ganung environment mo din eh kasi I've seen that no I've seen that with my friends who you know they will talk to me and you know we discuss about these things or even me diba? I mean uh just just proof that you know I was exposed to the business entrepreneurial world that's why you know it kind of rubbed off me uh then you know may ganung classing pressure uh that's good but I guess also we need to be more relevant no kasi kasi ang tendency ng maraming educational programs that I've seen, parang masyadong downloaded type of an information. This is how you do it, this is how you do it, this is how you do it. And then tapos may, minsan, nakita ko to, may halong shaming pa. May parang, hindi yun effective eh. Effective is coaching. O, hindi ka tara, gabayan kita, let's do it together. Parang ganun type of a, um, a movement at least. Uh, we want to be able to see that. Yeah, I, I'm so there. I, I so agree with you. Um, Randa, I want to talk about um, the situation of our country now and our economy. It's a fact mm-hmm. that the world has, uh, you know, suffered with this pandemic. The economy, the world's economy, hindi ng Pilipinas, damay damay tayong lahat. What's your take on the Philippine situation? And um, when, when is it? You know, when do you see our recovery happening? And how soon will it impact personal investors like us? Well, it's already in, impacted. I mean, we've seen that number. So, um, well, we have to look at this uh, this point. No, um, the Philippine economy, of course, we're affected by the global economy. Unfortunately, uh, many many parts of the globe has begun to grow, and maybe na iiwan tayo. I mean, this has got to do with our our issues with you no know, with you know vaccine rollouts, you know the proper management of the pandemic. It's connected to that, eh? Because, de ba? I mean, if If people can't go out and ex- go back to their normal way of living, it's going to affect certain things. Of course, there's certain sectors no, that are doing well. Uh, but again, as a, as a general rule, in economics, there's a supply issue, there's a demand issue. Put them together, it's a it's a problem. No? So, it's all anchored in our ability to manage the pandemic. Talaga, pa I mean, I hope I'm wrong, no? but um, at, up until we were able to see the numbers go down up until we see in regardless of whether you're pro vaccine or anti vaccine uh and, and until we see this until we get that level of herd immunity it's going to be taking uh, us a longer time we've seen that in other countries eh? uh the economy has begun to as they open up because of this better management of the of the pandemic their economy is starting to grow we've seen that uh tayo we're getting there 
but we have to i guess manage the pandemic this this thing faster no uh, again better vaccine rollout better communication uh you know all of these things to to happen yan yung mga kailangan natin and because of that it's an, it's now an economic issue the pandemic is now because it's also an economic issue uh it's just that money there's money okay but uh it's not being distributed you know by of course you know some people are not earning certain so sectors of the society are really um affected uh tremendously and and you know because they cannot spend i mean if i have a factory why would i produce more and have enough more supply than you know not people buying so it all ticket ticket yan and that's something we need to see and that's being reflected by your stocks you're reflected by the prices of your investments uh now that's going to have an impact yeah yeah i'm um, talking about that so what investment vehicles do you recommend for such a time as this alam mo the end of the day the same recommendations pre pandemic post pandemic of course number one, hindi pwedeng walang savings i mean you mm-hmm. For me, that's still investments, no? But savings, so it just can be wiser. Where can I find a better return for my savings? Or digital savings and all this, uh, these things. So there has to be that level of savings for that your liquidity. Then you can also look at certain. Um, I, ako, I'm a big fa- follower of ano, no? I'm, I'm a big fan of equities. So whether you do it in a mutual fund, a UITF, or selected stocks, because um, the prices have gone down. No, I mean, right the pandemic, I was. Not very happy with the equities market because it was so expensive, but the pandemic corrected that. So you can also look at that. But then you know there are also other um, areas. You know, property is always going to be there. I mean, I'm a big fan of uh, of real estate. It's it's still going to be as viable as you see it. And then there are other things. You know, if you're more very bold, maybe you can even consider cryptocurrency, a very small portion of your of your money. But you have to create a portfolio. So. Yan yung mga pwede mong gawin. Uh, eh, of course, hindi ka pwede mag-invest kung wala kang savings. Huwag ka muna mag-invest kung hindi ka mature. So, uh, you know, it has to go through a process pa din. Yeah, you, uh, we still need to learn how to diversify, no? Um, especially at a time like this. So, you can... Well, uh, we, need to, we need to learn how to save first. You cannot invest what you do not save. You cannot save if you don't know how to spend. So, they're all connected. You cannot do that when... You are not gainfully employed or working, and you're not creative enough to create, you know, multiple sources of income. So, babalik parin yan doon, and then everything follows in the in its right in its right time. I mean, I don't force people to invest now if they can't invest. Parang, but they can they can save now. I mean, that's something that they can do. Uh, Randall, I know you have a heart for the OFWs because you teach them uh, how to handle their finances. Uh, what can you advise those millions of OFWs who've lost their jobs during this mm-hmm. pandemic? You know, na talagang walang kamuang muang. You know, overnight they lost their their jobs and uh, didn't even get to finish um, their contracts. What oh, yeah. baby steps can they take to stabilize yeah. their finances after such a big and unexpected blow such as this? Madali ama ang ang sama na panggan no? dapat magmove on ano pero I think. Their families will have really have to play a big role. I mean, for for the longest time, the OFWs have been supporting their family, family members, extended family. I think this now, you know, now that we, this is a crisis, ano bang pwedeng gawin ng family? How can they work together? How can they make sure by maybe reducing costs, reducing, you know, para dependence on on the OFWs income? Importante yan eh. Kasi yung OFW laki may pressure tumulong eh. Yun, alam mo yun, meron silang I call this the ano the They have this uh, messianic duty that they feel. Now they have mm-hmm. to the savior their families, and and I told I tell them, ah, it's good to help, no, but they cannot be dependent on you. So the family has to step up. I mean, baka mayro member na family jan na pwede na magtrabaho or or de ba magtayo kayo ng negosyo niya pwede niya gawin magbuy and sell kayo magtinda kayo ng pagkain mag side hustle kayo sabi nga ng mga millennial, no. I mean they they have to solve their prop uh, their issues together as a family. Uh, while waiting, so I believe that the OFW, the, the market is going to open up for them again. I mean, because recovery will is now is now something that we're about to see. Of course, they're, they're going to need. I mean, Filipinos are one of the best 
loved uh, workers in the world. Eh. So it's gonna be. But in the meantime, we do this, or maybe, maybe some. This is where the entrepreneurial spirit comes in. Baka meron kang mga skills na na-pick up mo abroad na pwede mo nang gawin dito. Let me, just to be specific, no? Maybe you work for for a restaurant. You work for a restaurant. May na-pick up kang certain food skills doon na pwede mong gawin. Na maybe you can replicate here. That maybe you can now put it in in online delivery and mga ganyan. So, there are many things that you can do. Uh, example, uh, maybe you're a teacher abroad. And now a lot of these parents are having a difficulty home studying their homeschooling, home studying their children. Maybe you can come in as a as an online tutor. So, alam mo yon, you have to be flexible enough while you're waiting for assuming that the it's gonna open up again. Uh, the or the OFW market's gonna open up again. So, mahirap talaga. So that's why we've been trying to teach them na kalang may savings. This other thing, because the bigger problem is paano kung Paano naguhulog ako ng lupa? Hindi ko na mahulugan ngayon. That's why a lot of them are losing um, their hard, hard, hard investments, no hard, hardcore investments. So, yan lang talaga. Actually, breaks my heart when I see that. No? So, yun lang yung mga concerns, mga issues na hindi madali yung solusyon din para sa kanila. Ayun, para sa lahat. Um, yeah. So, um, you have to be resilient, you know. And uh, yung, yung sinabi mong income creation, um, multiple streams of income pa rin, ano? Siguro dati, isang income lang yung naasahan mo. Yung yung trabaho mo abroad. But now, medyo kailangan yeah, kang uh, yeah. dumiskarte. You know, yung ganda sa ano, Lisa, no? Kasi yung mga, like, millennials, they they use the word side hustle, no? I mean, sa era natin, tawag ka racket, no? Which can oh, be... Medyo, neg- diba medyo negative pa yung dating, di ba? Racket, sideline, o rumaracket ka, parang it's a negative. Today, you know, side hustle is something. Ito. I even do that, no? I I do a little bit of other things as well. Kasi parang sayang opportunity, eh. If there's something that you can you can use, you can do. So, again, uh, tingnan mo kung ano yung pwede mong gawin. Uh, of course, syempre, di ba? Uh, hindi pwede mawala yung, di ba? That's why you need to pray about it. You need to ask the Lord about it. Ano ba dapat mong gawin? Uh, baka minsan, kasi iba, may pride issue na, ay, gagawin ko yan, dito na ako. So, paano ang gagawin niya? How can I get the job? I can't, I can't work here. You know, I can't earn the same. You know, stuff like this that need to be dealt with. Hmm. Hindi pa po tapos ang usapan natin with Randall Chong. So, magbe-break lamang po tayo. Tapos pagbalik natin, ask the experts na. Dito po sa Your Money Matters. Love comes in many forms. But in times of trial and uncertainty, nothing spells love better than security. Peace of mind and hope for the future. For over 50 years, We have helped people express this four-letter word. So you can face life head-on and savor every moment it brings. Manila Banker's Life. The best way to show your love. Kaiser Medical Center provides a wide array of diagnostic and medical care services, ranging from immediate quality medical care to consultation to individuals and companies all over the Philippines. And because we value your health, our ultimate goal is to be your partner in health and wellness even long after your visit with us. Kaiser Medical Center is a diagnostic clinic equipped with highly committed and experienced professionals willing to provide you with excellent healthcare service focused on health and wellness at all times. Our aim is to have a consistent, lifelong relationship with our patients by providing convenient and affordable quality medical care and consultation which is preventive and curative in a happy, safe, and friendly environment. Kaiser Medical Center, kaagapay mo sa kalusugan. Protect yourself and your family and be certain with your future with Fidelity Life. 
It has been a long-time dedicated partner of IMG that provides life insurance benefit exclusively to its members to meet their risk protection needs. In partnership with Everest Memorial Services, Fidelity Life is also providing its members with free access to 24-7 Memorial Concierge Services. With the consent of the beneficiary, Fidelity Life shall apply the insurance benefit to cover the expenses for the memorial services of the deceased member. At Fidelity Wait, Life, the care of our members and their families is our first and most important business. Be life confident by protecting your loved ones and securing your future. Nagbabalik po tayo sa Your Money Matters at ito, Randall, ang tanong mula sa uh, isa, kay Jackie, isang financial controller. Ang tanong niya, why do we need to pay life insurance until 80 years old and above? Randall, meron pa bang nag-i-insure nag sa 80 years old at mas matanda pa? <laughs> well, actually, depende sa product na binili mo. No? That's what you collect. It's like a whole life product that you pay or it may be a VUN na gano'n. So, Depending na yan on the design. Kasi there are insurance products na limited pay or it can sort support depending on how you want how you, depending on how you want to be able to do it. So, it's an option yan. Uh, if you want to continue maximize your benefits and everything, maybe that product, maganda yung bayaran until, you know, until the time you need it. So, I can't give an answer until I actually see the particular product. No? But, uh, maraming options yan. You can choose many options. You can even DIY your own insurance, no? Uh, basta, basically, uh, I, I, I recommend insurance until the time you need it. Kasi baka mamaya, feeling mo, hindi mo kailangan, tapos kailangan mo pala. So, yan lang. So, eh, lalo, na yung, lalo na yung life insurance, Randa, kasi sigurado namang mamamatay tayo. Uh, di ba? Ay, alam mo, you have to look at uh, insurance as a, it's a hedge. Eh. I mean, of course, some people are selling it as an investment. Ako, I, it is a protection product. Eh. Of course, so, Basically, I buy life insurance because o oh, may mangyari sa akin. Paano? Like ako, I have life insurance, uh, multiple life insurance. Why? Yes, two, you know, I have four kids. Two of them already married. You know, two are are entering, one's entering college. Or so, so, alam mo yung mga, from that protection need, medyo, ano na, medyo, because now I'm in my, you know, mid-50s, no? So, I'm now medyo less and less dependent. But I still want to make sure that the lifestyle that I, I, you know, nakasanayan my wife and my kids na it will continue. So, I need life insurance. Or what if I get sick? What if all of these things? Importante sa akin yan. Kasi, you know, I'm investing. Yes, but I haven't really hit my target. And insurance is a way to make sure that even if hindi mo na hit yung investment targets mo, the insurance process will come in and, and at least, diba, um, keep your keep your dreams alive. At least for your family. So, yan yung purpose niya. Okay, there you heard it from Randall Chongson. Thank you so much, Randall. Thank you for your time. It's such a joy learning from you. Salamat, ha? My pleasure. Yeah, you wanna you wanna plug anything? Uh, any of your uh, okay? You know? um, they can they can just go to my Facebook, um, Twitter, Instagram. I post it there. A lot of it, especially in my Facebook. So ando naman siya and. And I do a lot of, for financial advisors, financial planners. I also do a lot of programs like the Masterclass, the Level Up Masterclass. So, ando naman siya. They can just check my Facebook for those things. Also, okay, follow me. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes, salamat sa oras na binigay mo sa amin, Randall. Sana hindi ito ang huli. And we yeah. hope to see you again. Right. Bye, guys. Thank you. Ang katanungan mo, ay maaaring katanungan ng karamihan. Kaya't padala nyo na kami ng inyong questions dito sa yourmoneymatters.ph at gmail.com Our show is about to end, but here's one last word from Proverbs 24, 33 to 34. I'll read it in Tagalog para mas feel natin. Konting tulog, bahagyang idlip, sandaling pahinga, at pagkahalukip-kip. Samantalang namamahinga ka, ang kahirap ay darating na parang armadong magnanakaw 
upang kunin ang lahat ng iyong kailangan. Nako, what a warning from God's Word. So let's be diligent in managing our finances as well as all the other gifts that God has given in our lives. Till our next episode, I'm Risa Singh Son Kaopeng. See you again because your money matters. Bye! brand new iPhone Pro Max 12 with these four easy steps. Step 1. Subscribe to ING YouTube channel. Step 2. Click the notification bell. Step 3. Share one episode of Your Money Matters on Facebook and tag three friends using the hashtags Hashtag IMG Your Money Matters Hashtag I Am Great iPhone 12 Pro Max Giveaway Hashtag IMG Official Channel Step 4. Visit img-corp.net slash iPhone 12 Pmax and fill out the giveaway registration form. The lucky winners will be raffled during the live premiere of the last episode of Your Money Matters Season 3. Watch and share this with your family and friends now to get a chance to win. Good luck! We would like to thank our sponsors. Learn the secret to saving and building your future. Become your own financial educator through IMG, International Marketing Group, your total financial solution. May Kaiser para sa iyo, kahit maputi na ang buhok mo. Kaiser International Health Group, the first name in healthcare. Seguridad ng buhay at proteksyon para sa mga minamahal. Manila Bankers Life Insurance Corporation. The best way to show your love. Nangungunang kaagapay mo sa kalusugan. Kaiser Medical Center, your partner in health and wellness.